Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a Linux story time. So for those that don't have any interest in Linux, uh, definitely don't watch this video. There's not going to be anything of interest in there because I haven't had success with having the hardware acceleration working on this device. So I have to run with no mode set to even have anything work on this display past the boot menu. So very quickly, I've installed Zubuntu, the latest version of Zubuntu 18.4. Um, it comes with kernel 4.15. The errors that I got from using the kernel mode setting for the 9.15 driver indicated that there was an error. So I looked it up and it went to e Intel's bug report. Uh, they said that there was a fix for Gemini Lake stuff using MIPI panels, which this is. Now, again, for those that may not be aware, the GPU Win 2 and the Pocket 2, they do have MIPI panels, but there is an adapter in them uh, that is uh, EDP to uh, Embedded DisplayPort to MIPI uh, because Core M3 does not support MIPI, but because Celeron N4100 is basically like a super Atom chipset and Atom does support MIPI panels, uh, they're going directly to MIPI. There is no adapter in between these at all. So now... There's two issues. Number one is that this panel and the interface to it might be sending some weird information because even when I do load the um, the the Intel drivers, the i915 drivers for Gemini Lake, the problem is is that I get a weird multiple of this portrait resolution, which is 720 by 1280. What I get is a multiple of of, of both of those width and height. It's like two two point two five for the width. For the height and two times for the width so there's some weird gunky stuff going on there um but basically i went to a 420 generic uh kernel which should have had the upstream patches from intel because they should have been in there 417. uh additionally there is this gem uh, config pin control gemini lake equal y i've also updated the gemini lake firmware on this and i'll show you that later basically i was trying to get the latest kernel the latest uh, driver to kind of make sure everything worked. Unfortunately, I'm still encountering the same errors that I had in 4.15. However, when you take a look at this kernel 5, this is compiled compiled from the Intel DRM tip sources themselves. And I am getting new errors, which is always a great sign that you're making progress or making worse times. Uh, sorry about that. I'm just focusing on my hand. Uh, so other things that you can see that I've tried to do in here, trying to pass these boot parameters. Um, so this DRM part right here is just um, getting better, more information out of more verbosity out of dmessage. Uh, this frame buffer console rotate one will just make it rotate when we're in, using TTY. Um, no mode set is what we need. So basically, say don't load any of kernel mode settings at all. We'll just you know we'll do it raw. Here I am specifying the video directly, and I'm also doing mode options to try and being very explicit, especially with no EDID right here, saying don't pay attention to anything that this mon this display is sending you at all. Just do what I tell you. Uh, it still doesn't really help. So uh, let's go ahead and run that. And initially when we see this, it'll be a portrait style, but after it runs my boot parameter, everything is rotated correctly and we can begin working on it. Now, um, X will run and you will get this display, but you will not be able to rotate this display, which, you know, might've been fine for some people, right? Because it, like, who, who cares? You don't have um, hardware acceleration, but you still have X. And if it was rotated properly, you know, you could have it still work as a desktop, but you know, you, you really wouldn't have any hardware acceleration. So things like uh, any uh, hardware decoder for uh, video wouldn't work. Obviously, uh, Vulkan and OpenGL won't work. So um, anything, this is just going to be software driven alone. If we go ahead and take a look at display, it kind of paints a better picture of, of what's going on and what's happening, what the system is seeing very clearly. You can see that it's 720 by 1280 because that's what the actual panel is. But it does have this weird Hertz rating. Now, when we do no mode set, the thing about this is, all oh, right. That's on Wayland. So um, I've tried Wayland, I've tried X11, and it doesn't really matter what you use. If we go and do X render, right, and we take a look at it, uh, most everything is showing fine, except it is showing that weird Hertz rating. Now, when we do load the 915 drivers, 
Um, it does, so you can see default is the screen right here. It does successfully report DSi-1 as the correct panel, as well as HDMI and DisplayPort, as well as your additional outputs that you can do via x renders can see. Um, obviously, you need to have those connected for them to uh, display, you know, show you any parameters. However, there's nothing we can do in XRender to kind of rotate this screen. Um, so you're basically stuck with this. So this is not helpful to me at all, which is why I've done that um, frame buffer rotate so that when I jump in the console, at least it looks appropriate. I'll go ahead and kind of get this a little bit closer for you guys just so that you can see what's going on. Um, I don't really care if you get my password and username here because they're uh, I've put in too many zeros. It's four zeros, not five. Uh, Zood min do three four and I'm in hacker voice I'm in uh, okay so um, very quickly we can do less hope okay and then in here let's go ahead and search for error okay so now you can see these errors we can kind of like go through them and it's a little bit clearer right there so uh, let's go ahead and clear uh, see, hey, that's lunch on me. Okay. Let me see that. Don't wish to. Let me do, um, yeah, that's fine. Um, all right. So right here you can see error GPIO index five. So, uh, general purpose input output. Um, I don't know what this is needed specifically with this MIPI adapter uh, with a display cable. I don't know what GPIO has to do with MIPI, uh, the MIPI connection, but it's definitely something. Um, and that's what that kernel boot parameter that I was tossing uh, that I showed you earlier. That's one of the things that have come up. There's also an atomic error. Now, the one good bit here is negative two that you see right here. This actually changes um, when I use the kernel, uh, the five kernel compiler from the Intel DRM tip. Uh, wait, let me... Get out of here. Alrighty, so let us go to, um, you know, let me go to, because I've gone and, okay, right there, 9915, and here. So right here you can see the new uh, driver that uh, firmware bin uh, binary that I've tried loading, and this is that Gemini Lake. This is the latest one, and I was hoping if I had that along with the 420 uh, kernel, which hopefully had the patches, I've done them in five. I'm making slow progress. I'm getting new errors, but again, because GPD has partnered with Ubuntu Mate, I've decided to basically stop my efforts because I'm just kind of slowly smashing my face through this, uh, only when I have free time after work. Uh, and a lot of the time I was actually just compiling a lot of things. I could have done it elsewhere, but, oh, whoops, let me back out. Downloads. And in here you can see all of the stuff, all the sources that I had from Intel's DRM tip. Uh, I don't know if you can see Linux. I think that Linux 4.16 is actually Intel uh, 5. Let me just go into hope. Again, this is not a very entertaining video. So DRM tip, actually everything's in here. So basically I've compiled all these parts that they required, uh, tried loading them up. I'm sure I'm making an error somewhere. Um, if we do LS mod, you can see that even the Gemini Lake, this pin control Gemini Lake and Gemini Lake right there. Actually, in, there is another module that's not loaded, probably because we're not uh, doing the we're doing no mode set. This would show up. You would actually see the Gemini Lake firmware itself listed, which is uh, let me go ahead and find that for you again. Yeah, it's in here. So um, this this part right here, this Gemini Lake thing, actually shows up. So anyway, that's it. There's uh, basically what I want to say is. This is not a hardware problem. There might be something weird about the panel with the display po uh, display panel connecting to it and basically gorking up Linux and Linux not knowing what to do because it has a resolution and parameters that aren't what this panel is. There, I'm sure, are ways to get around it. Um, either Intel needs to do a bug report, uh, well, bug report. Intel needs to 
uh, issue a patch that will get around it. Or there are some parameters that need to be passed to kind of bypass whatever the hell is going on and let the the i95, the Gemini Lake driver, to load and run. But that's where we are right now. For people that just want to have, you know, console, you could totally just do that now. That works just fine. So for people that are comfortable in this environment, obviously you have that available to you right now. Doesn't matter what the hell you're running. That'll definitely work 100%. But if you're just going to be using this, then you can just do, you know, uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, you can do a VM in Windows. You can do a lot of different things. There's just having this and solely this, I don't know, the, the value of that uh, is up to the person and individual. Anyway, um, there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's stuff happening. Um, I, did, I, wanted, I was hoping to have more information for you guys. So I was kind of like drawing this out without having an update video for you. But I decided, you know what, I just got to get this out to you guys. So this is where I am. There are things happening outside. I am no longer going to be bashing my face against this. Uh, that's it. As more information is happening, I'll get it out to you guys. As always, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.